QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Void Check and Prior Period Make Adjustment. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the home page open. You can open the home page by going to the company drop down and selecting home page. We also have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We want to take a look at the activity of voiding a check that had been entered. And we're thinking about one that had been entered in the prior period. So note, anytime you're thinking about something that has been entered in the prior period, and you want to remove it or change it in some way, you want to be careful about the way you do that because you could uh, mess up the prior period balances. So let's see if we can consider that in an example. Note, if you have a check that's going to be in the system, it might have been entered by just writing a check here. You could have uploaded the check directly into the uh, check register. We're going to go to the check register shortly. And some of the items that are going to be check type forms, meaning the check type form, is going to be a form that's going to be decreased in the checking account, whether it be a check or some other type of payment. We're still using a check type of form. So we'll go through a similar process if, if it was some other type of payment, such as an electronic payment. You also want to be careful if it's a check form that's going to be tied to some other area that's connected to one of the flow uh, type processes. For example, if you're talking about a check that's going to be, per that's going to be made from the sales tax widget, meaning we'd use the sales tax widget in order to create the sales tax check. You want to be a little bit careful on voiding a check that was generated from, you know, using that widget. You want to make sure that you're not messing up anything else that was tied to it. If it was a payroll liability type of check, these will still be check type forms that will be used. But again, you want to be careful when voiding or, you know, when voiding a paycheck liability check, same with an employee check. Those being in the in the process in the in the process of payroll and and whatnot. If it's just a standard check that you use, say, to pay the phone bill or something like that, then those you, you are less likely to be connected to something else and cause you problems when voiding them. But there still could cause you problems if uh, you're voiding these checks in prior time periods. Let's open up the register and check this out. So typically, I would void the checks from the register. That's what, where I would go. So you can go there by going to the banking account. And you could go to the uh, register, you can go banking and then uh, use register, or you can go to the lists drop down and go to the chart of accounts, which is what I would typically do. Then I'm going to go to the checking account, that's going to be my bank account, double click on that. Now you could tell if you're using some kind of special check or just kind of a normal type of check. And remember when I say check, that's the form that will be used to decrease the checking account it might not just simply be a check type form. Uh, in that an actual check, it might be an electronic payment or something like that, you would still use a check type form. If it's a special type of check, if it says something other than CHK down here, even if it's not actually a check, doesn't have a check number, if it says CHK, it's most likely a fairly simple check that's not really tied to anything else that you got to worry about uh, in addition to the fact that you're dealing with a check possibly that was written in the past. If it says something like paycheck, then you got to be careful because that was done in the payroll process and that gets more complex. So you want to be careful about voiding a payroll check. If it's a bill payment check, that check's tied to a bill payment, tied to accounts payable. It's linked to a bill. So you want to be more careful about voiding a check or just make sure you know you understand the links that are going on here. If it's a, if it's a liability check, then that's a check. Typically, I think this is a payroll liability check that's made by the widget to pay the payroll liability. So again, it's within the payroll liability process, which could be more complex than just a simple check. Here's a tax payment check, paying off sales tax. Again, using a widget, and you could see that by this indication here. These are basically normal checks, which probably have uh, less likelihood of causing you problems, normal decreases to the checking account. Now to practice this, QuickBooks has a nice little feature that it tries to basically help you out and not mess up like uh, your retained earnings and whatnot for timing differences by voiding a check in the past. So let's kind of test this out. Note that as of now, uh, today here is uh, 2020, October 2020. So I'm going to enter a check in the past and then QuickBooks in order to use this feature may have to use like today's date. So if you're in a different year, just remember QuickBooks is going to basically use today's date when you do this like feature possibly in order to... Um, to to not mess up basically retained earnings from a transaction that happened in the past. So let's enter a check as if it was entered in the past. I'm going to make it, uh, let's say, 0615 
one nine and so i'm just going to enter a check and i'm going to say other here or let's say let's call it test just to make it uh stand out i'm going to say test this is going to go to a, a, a test and then i'm going to say this is one thousand dollars and the other account i'm actually going to set up an, an expense account just called test account so that we can set this up i'm going to set up a test account it's going to be an expense type of account i'm just going to say save and close and then i'm going to say enter now let's open up our financial statements i'm going to go to the reports drop down company and financial take a look at the uh let's take a look at the income statement first income statement for 2019 that's when we entered this so 010119 12 and there's my test account which is resulting in, in a negative net income because it hit the expense account let's think about what happens on the balance sheet if i go to reports drop down accounting and uh, company uh <laughs> company and financial balance sheet changing the dates up top from I'm going to say 010119 to 123119 and OK. And we'll note down here, all we have is that transaction. That's all we have in 2019. And we have it in the net income in equity, meaning the income statement rolled into the equity section here. If I go one more date up, if I take this up to uh, January 2020, that changes to the equity account. So net income rolls into equity. Well, what if this check doesn't go? What if I'm, it's a mistake or something? I got to void the check in some way. Well, if, if you have now passed, it's now 2020 and the check was entered in 2019. If you void it as of 2019, then your equity will not match what it was in the prior year. And that could mess you up if you're an S corporation or an, or an LLC, that, that'll mess up your taxes if you have to report a balance sheet because the retained earnings will no longer roll over because you deleted something that was on the income statement in the prior tax period and it didn't roll into the equity section. So that's one reason you want to be careful of delete of, you know, deleting or voiding anything basically in the past. So the general rule is that you, you don't really want to delete anything. That's the other thing. That you, if I go back to the checking account, you might be tempted. Also, if I go back, I'm going to go all the way to the top. And this is in uh, 2019. Now you might also be tempted here to simply delete this transaction and QuickBooks will let you do that. If I was to right click on it, then you can, you can delete the transaction. Just simply delete the check here. If I was to go into the check, here's the actual check form. You could delete the check there. However, you don't typically want to delete transactions because it erases the audit trail for one thing. What you would rather want to do is write the check, see the error, and then fix it with another transaction so that you could see basically the audit trail, especially if you're talking about a transaction that happened in the prior period, especially if it happened in the prior period and it involves an expense account or is tied to some other form uh, as well, because then you could mess up the connection to the other form and you'll mess up basically the, the retained earnings calculation. So the other option here on the check is, of course, we could void the check. And when you void the check, you could result in the same problem. But QuickBooks has a, a little feature that can try to try to avoid that. So I'm going to I'm going to avoid the check, right click and say I'm going to want to avoid the check. And then if I say enter, QuickBooks gives me this message says you have changed the transaction. Do you want to to record your changes? I'm going to say uh, yes. And then we get this pop up that says to maintain accuracy of your financial reports and balance the accounts affected by the check. QuickBooks can create a journal entry earlier uh, period and a reversing journal entry in the current period. So they're basically saying, hey, look, we're gonna make a journal entry so that this transaction doesn't affect your retained earnings. We're gonna make two transactions so you don't have to do it manually. We're gonna do it for you. We're gonna create two transactions so that it doesn't mess up your net income that rolled into retained earnings in the past, and then we'll, we'll reverse it in the current time period. So would you like QuickBooks to avoid the check and enter the appropriate journal entries for you? And so I'm going to say yes. Let's see what it does for us there. So now we have we have up top the check is void. So it properly voided the check. And then it created a journal entry. It created two journal entries. One journal entry as of the same date of the check so that it doesn't actually affect the, uh, the net income in that time period. And another journal entry that's going to be in the current time period, it made it as of uh, 10, 12 here, the current date. That's why I had to note the current date. So if you're in some date 
uh, after this time period. It won't be 10, 12. It will be whatever the current date is if you use this function. But the point is it'll it'll do that as of today's date. If, if you're working not in today's date or something, then of course you can change the date here to whatever date uh, would be appropriate. Also note now that we're going to have these two items that are going to basically show up when you do the bank reconciliation. These two items will be on a bank reconciliation. And the point is with this one, we, it was something that never cleared. We needed, to, we needed to avoid it. So now that we have these two items that will be on the bank reconciliation, we'll simply be able to check both of them off and then it'll clear itself out. So let's take a look at that. If I go to the banking dropdown and I go to reconcile, and I'm just going to choose, I'm just going to keep the default. I'm not going to put an ending date. I just want to look at the reconciliation to see these two items within it. I'm going to say, okay, uh, you must enter an ending balance. All right, 100,000 ending balance and okay. And so now when I do the bank reconciliation, notice it automatically checked these two off or these three off for us already. Here's the zero item, which we can now clear because it has now been voided. And then we have these two items that are going to cancel each other out. And they're both on there so that we don't mess up the uh, we, we don't mess up the transaction in terms of the retained earnings account. So it allows us to then check these off and clear it off with the bank reconciliation as well and not cause us any problems and not mess up the retained earnings as it rolls forward. So I'm going to close this back out. Let's see what happens on the P&L if I go back to the profit and loss then and I look and I take a look at it and I double click on this test account here, this test expense account. We now see that we have avoided, we avoided the amount up top. And then we recorded the journal entry to put it back in there as an expense so that it still rolls into the retained earnings properly. So if I close this back out and I go to the balance sheet and I take this back to 2019, 123119, we see then net income is still there. It's the same as it was before, but, but now it's you know changed on the income statement. At, we voided the check and we have that journal entry. If I go back to the profit and loss and I run this as of today's date, which is... Uh, October 12th. So let's just do it just for the day 12, uh, 20, 10, 12, 20. And again, whatever day that you that you did this on, <laughs> that's when the day that's the day that they will record the transaction to. And you'll see basically the negative expense here, the negative expense because it reversed out the expense, not as of 2019, but as of the current date because you've already processed 2019, right? The 2019 already rolled into retained earnings. So this one then is going to be in the current day, reducing the expenses as of, to, as of today so that your timing is, you know, doesn't get messed up. So your retained earnings doesn't get messed up. So there it is in, in, the, in the current time period. All right, so I'm going, to go, I'm going to go back here to the checking account. And I'm actually going to I'm going to delete all three of these because I, I said I wasn't going to add any more data here. So this is going to throw off my data. So I'm going to delete these before we move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and I know I told you just not to do this, but this is the practice file and we changed the practice file. So I'm going to delete these just so you know as we go forward and delete the journal entry here. And I'm going to delete this. Now, now also note that you can void it this way without doing those reversing entries. And it would just simply, when it gives you that option, you just say, no, just void it, just void it straight out. Now, if you were in the same year, at least, that might not be too bad. But even if you're in a, in a following month, uh, it could mess up the reconciliation. If you had already reconciled, the general rule may be, you know, if you already reconciled the month that was involved, then you probably want to use that feature to do the journal entries. If you have not reconciled and you're in the same year, maybe then you can be okay with just voiding it without doing that kind of th that thing because you haven't really closed out the month yet and if you're in the same month if you're if you're making this adjustment within the same month then maybe you you can void it without making that double journal entry basically adjustment it might not have an impact so then i'm going to close this out but the general i'm going to right click and delete this general rule is and a lot of software will actually not let you basically just delete a transaction like i just did right there It'll, it'll typically stop you from doing that because you want the audit trail going forward. So be careful to put the audit trail. And even when you're voiding a check, uh, you want to make sure that, uh, that you're, you're taking care of the dates so that retained earnings will be properly recorded uh, as you move forward.